Welcome back. This is going to be my daily forecast for the S&P 500. So in this video, I'm not just going to look at the daily chart. I'm, I'm also going to look at the, the weekly chart in order to determine the long term trend of the S&P 500. Also going to look at the historical data for the S&P 500 in order to um, to um, predict where the S&P 500 it most likely will go into the future. Also going to look at the uh, different kinds of factors that will have a major inf in impact on the S&P 500. For example, monetary policy, inflation, inflation numbers, and, and so on and so on. So let's get to it. So if we look at the, the S&P 500 in the last two years, then we were in a really a nice upward channel. So this is the beginning of the coronavirus back in February 2020. The market fell off a cliff over 30% lost and then the Fed stepped in and basically they started buying up everything in the market. So they decreased interest rates basically to zero and then they were basically buying up bonds in the market and they, their, um, their policy was that nobody, no company in the United States was going to fail uh, be due to this uh, pandemic. So even companies that probably would have failed, they were also going to save those companies. So the Fed stepped in and the Fed is still uh, stepping in. Even though they have increased interest rates, uh, the Fed is still um, actively buying uh, bonds on the market. And as long as they're going to do that, that's going to be very bullish for the market. And and uh, that's probably something that people don't talk about that much. They're focused on the interest rates and uh, inflation and so on. But as long as, as the Fed is keeping the market afloat by uh, by QE, then they are. Uh, we are most likely going to see an upward trend. We will see pullbacks, but uh, as long as Fed is buying, that will be very bullish for for the market markets. So. so we have been we were in this channel for roughly two years uh, amazing run to the upside until we came to um, january this year where we basically broke through this lower trend line we fell roughly 20 percent from the very highs and have covered roughly half of that so if you look at where we are now we are trading at 4542.8 and um at this current stage, we have um, a crossing of the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average. That is usually what you call a death cross, and usually that is very bearish for the market. But it doesn't really mean that it has to last for that long. We can also already see that the 50 moving average is about to bottom and turn around, and can turn around quite, um, you know, quite soon, or quite quickly, I was supposed to say. So at this current stage, we have had a really nice rally from the bottom. And at this point, a pullback towards the 200 moving average or the 50 moving average could be expected. So we could see something similar to this before going higher. So there are two scenarios here. One is that we basically will run into massive resistance in this area. As you can see that this is an area of major resistance and that we fall back down and make a lower low. But that basically, that basically means that we're going to drop below 4,100 yet again and make a lower low. And that will be really, really bearish for, for the market. The other scenario is that we have a pullback on Monday or the next few trading days and then continue until we basically hit this upper trend line. So as I said, as long as the Fed is basically supporting this market, they are still actively buying uh, bonds on the market, then the market will continue to increase. There's also been the, the big banks going out that they expect the, an increase of roughly 11% from the high, highs here for 2022. And that may well be the case, uh, meaning that we'll go closer to 5,000 uh, than we will go to 4,000 uh, and 4,100 and less than that. So we may, the big test here is when we get to this upward uh, lower channel because then we'll run into major resistance. But if we manage to break into this channel yet again, then we may continue in this channel. The other uh, scenario is that we may go sideways. They will just go sideways like this and then we can drop or go up. That is also possible. If you look at historical 
for the S&P 500, you can basically see that this was, uh, this kind of price action has never, never, never really, really occurred, occurred before. We have had minor rallies like this, but not in the magnitude that we saw here. So the Fed was very, very aggressive when it stepped in and, uh, and tried to help the market. And they're still being really, really aggressive. They're actually way behind the curve, and that's probably one of the mistakes that the Fed is doing at this current stage. So this pullback was always expected, and it, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a much bigger pullback in 2022, uh, mainly due to the fact that they have to increase interest rates, and at some point they will start with their bond purchasing program, or basically cut back on the bond purchasing program. program. But at this current stage, they're not doing that. And therefore, this trend may continue or we'll see rallies to the upside um, instead of seeing this market completely fall apart. If you look at, for example, the technical indicators for the S&P 500, we can see that uh, when, we, when the RSI gets below 30, then we usually see a major uh, rally to the upside. We saw it back here. 2022 we can also see it right here this is um uh, yeah only a few weeks ago this january where we rallied yet again and so on so getting below the 30 in the in the in the rsi usually means that we'll have a really bullish run and, and that and that's we can, we can also see in the weekly chart you can see it right here that every time we get close to the 30 this is back in 2020 then we have a massive rally and we continue this rally. We got really close to the 30, not to the very bottom. This could have been the bottom and then we'll continue. But if we get down toward the below the 30, then that is kind of the uh, where ex uh, you should expect this market to continue in its uptrend. We saw it also here back in 2018, where it hit the 200 moving average and got to the very bottom. We can also see it if we go all the way back to the financial crisis in 2008. We can see it right there, got below, and then it continue in this massive rally. And here also in 2011. So we were almost at the bottom, but we have turned around. Stochastic has also turned around for the weekly chart and also the MACD is about to cross the signal line indicating that we may see several more weeks of this basically continuing to the upside. If the uh, MACD basically gets rejected here, then we can uh, fall down. But historically, we can see it right here in 2020, when it crosses, we have an uptrend. And that is basically what has happened every single time. You can all see it here in 2018. We can see it here in 2016 and we can see it also here, also here in 2008 in the financial crisis when we have a crossing uh, of these lines we'll have a period um, uh, probably two or three months uh, probably more than that uh, where this market will rally so considering that if we basically cross here uh, then we may see this rally well into basically the summer of 2022 so one factor that will be really important for the S&P 500 going forward or the economy as a whole going forward will be inflation. So we can see that inflation at this current stage is above 7%. If we go back to the 80s, uh, we can see that inflation was roughly 14.6%. So the inflation, inflation rate is high at the moment, but it's not as high as it was back in the 80s. Uh, but you have to go all the way back to 1982 in order to see inflation rates uh, of above 7%. So it is um, high inflation, but not as high as it was back in the 80s. So what the Federal Reserve basically did here in order to get inflation under control was to increase interest rates. So that is the mechanism that the Federal Reserve has or central bank have in order to um, stabilize prices or get prices under control. It has a negative side because increasing interest rates basically means that it will cost you more in order to lend money. So every time the central bank increases interest rates, uh, that basically means that the GDP will uh, 
contract and the uh, economy basically will shrink. And that means also that you will have uh, unemployment rate increase, uh, increase and so on. So it's going to be really difficult for uh, the uh, Federal Reserve to increase interest rates or so basically get inflation under control and not have an effect on the economy. Usually a period with high um, with high inflation it leads to a period in, uh, of recession. So mainly due to the fact that the, the Federal Reserve has to increase interest rates in order to get inflation under control. But while they do that, it basically affects GDP and the economy, real economy, and it goes basically into recession. So that is kind of what people expect uh, for the foreseeable future. And that will not be a positive thing uh, for for uh, the S&P 500. If you look at the, the interest rates for the Federal Reserve, we can say see that the interest rate today is at 0.25%. It's almost at a historical low. It was basically all the way down to nearly zero here in, the, in 2020 to 2021 and has only recently increased to 0.25. Uh, we can also see the period here uh, from to, uh, 2008 and all the way to 2015, it also was historically low. So this was a period after the financial crisis where you basically needed the, the economy to um, started growing again. So that's what uh, the Federal Reserve does. It basically lowers interest rates um, in order to uh, make it cheaper for people and companies in order to lend money. And in a period when uh, the economy is growing again, they start slowly increasing interest rates. And that's why we saw in back in 2018 and 2019 a big a drop in the S&P 500. Then came the uh, pandemic and the Federal Reserve basically lowered it almost to zero. Now they started increasing again because the world, the US economy is growing. The stock market is fine, the labor market is fine, everything is doing just fine and so on. But, but back in the late uh, 1980s, they increased interest rates to roughly 19.1% in order to um, stop inflation. So that's why the economists are so um, uh, skeptical for the future of uh, the U.S. economy, and they think that the Federal Reserve has basically um, not increased interest rates uh, fast enough because they're very late. Uh, inflation is already increasing, and we are basically uh, down at nearly zero in in the interest rate. But after um, they got inflation under control, they started decreasing the interest rate again. So they started growing again, increasing again, lowering again, and so on and so on. And historical pattern for the interest rate is that basically it has been in a downtrend. So we have had periods, for example, here from 2015 to 2018, where they basically have increased and, uh, and then we drop back to zero. So in the coming future, uh, for 2022 and 2023, interest rates are expected to go back to uh, two to three uh, percent, mainly basically to the same levels prior to uh, the Corona virus. So the last chart that we're going to look at is the total asset of the Federal Reserve. So currently, the Federal Reserve's asset are roughly nine trillion dollars. So this is the QE. So what well, basically the Federal Reserve does is that it can buy and sell bonds. So in order to keep liquidity in the market, they basically buy up bonds and instead and therefore they increase the liquidity of the, in, the, in the market. So back in 2008, uh, when we had the financial crisis, they started to buy bonds in the market in order to increase the liquidity in the market. And ever since, this has just increased and increased and increased. There have been periods, for example, in 2008, where they started to increase interest rates and subsequently try, tried to lower their assets purchasing or basically cut back on QE. And what we basically saw in the market was that the market fell more than 25%. And after that, we have the, when we come to 2020, 
we had the uh, coronavirus and they just go bananas buying uh, up bonds in the market so if goes from roughly four trillion the, um, the the balance sheet all the way up to roughly nine billion and they're still buying and uh, as long as they're still buying they will continue adding liquidity to the market and this is um, if they continue doing this then it's very bullish for the market when they start cutting back on buying bonds like they did back in 2018 that will basically be really really negative for the s p 500 but at this current stage they are still buying and therefore even though they they are slowly increasing interest rates um, it should not have that uh, big of effect on the s p 500. so what this means for the s p 500 for the near future uh, well i have three scenarios i have where we have the market basically uh, continue declining as we have seen uh, the last three months we have a period we have a scenario where we could see the market just go sideways and we have a scenario where the market could go back with, towards the channel that we saw back in 2020, uh, 2020 and 2021 and then continue its in a decrease. So there are uh, basically good things and there are also bad things. For example, uh, inflation or increased inflation, that's bad for the market. Increase in interest rates, that is bad for the market. Um, but uh, continuation of the QE program that is very bullish for historically for the market as long as the as the Fed will continue to um, to um, to uh, buy up bonds then that should be very bullish for the market then there also there is also the war in Eastern Europe which always can have um, short term um, both negative and positive effects on the market so we can see the market first of all running into major resistance in the next few weeks if you we look at for example historically then we see that we have a top here we have a bottom here and we also have a double top here so this is an area where we'll find major resistance and that could mean that we will see in the next week this market basically dropping back down and we could make a new low so we have a low here a low here and then we could have another low these technical indicators do not support that at this current stage it is bullish the macd the stochastic is bullish and so is the rsi so that may well not be the case uh, in the near uh, basically for next week but we can also see the market going sideways that basically means that we'll neither go up or down and we'll just go aside in a sideways motion that's also one scenario but if we look at the technical indicators and uh, how this market has been behaving uh, the last week and a half then it's fairly likely to say that we may see a pullback early next week down towards the 50 moving average and then starting to increase yet again so if we find a major support down here at the 50 moving average and then breaking above both of these uh, double dot this area here then it's more likely that we'll go and chase this uh, lower trend line and and uh, we'll go back towards the 4900 give or take but that is to be seen so hope you find this helpful you're welcome to support the channel by subscribing hit the like button and the bell button to see our newest videos and good luck and thank you very much